Thomas Hodgkin? Shouldn't it be Thomas Hodgkin? It should be me, this Thomas Hodgkin. What has he done anyway? Discovered some disease? Bloody capitalist. Dear friend, I've contributed way more to modern society than you ever will. Have you? Yes, my research has saved millions of lives. Not that you'd care. You're an economist, all you care about is supply and demand. I do care about this capitalist system, which you're a part of, and what it does to our society. But can't you see we're all better off than before? What about slavery? What about manual laborers? You wouldn't be talking about equality if you saw the social injustice that's done to so many people. Growth might be good for some of us, but we have to look beyond our own noses. But capitalism isn't about suppression. Can't you see that this growth is a hockey stick towards a better future? Following findings from the Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution improved production processes and made it possible for people and information to travel faster than ever before. Inventions such as the spinning jenny allowed the work of 200 people to be done by one person and in the same amount of time. People began producing more goods in less time and, by, and with less manpower. So competitive markets developed and capitalism flourished. This in turn sparked a dramatic increase in income. Nowadays, on average, people earn 10 times as much as 300 years ago. Western Europeans even enjoy 20 times as much income as their ancestors 300 years ago. This can be measured by GDP, or gross domestic product, per capita. A measure of the value of all the goods and services produced in the economy in a particular year, divided by its population. Capitalism has also led to an increase in the growth of cities. Whereas, three centuries ago, only 3% of us lived in cities, now more than half of us live. However, with more and more people, it also came an increase in poverty and inequality. The Gini coefficient tries to measure these inequalities considering the differences in income. In 1820, the worldwide Gini index was 0 0.43, whereas in 2002 it was 0 0.78. As a result of capitalism, worldwide inequalities seem to grow as well. One can see that capitalism has its advantages and its disadvantages, but what will happen next? Can our environment, in fact, can we handle further growth in population, income, global inequality? Or will there be another turning point in human history? Okay. <laughs>